I've been asked more times than I can count how No Man's Sky compares to Starfield and vice versa. They are two very prominent games in the space exploration field and as such bring attention to the genre. So finally, I decided to take a stab at actually comparing the two of them. Most of the time, my answer is as simple as the only thing they share in common is that they are in space. But in making this video, I've discovered it might be that there's a lot more to this to take a look at. Hi guys, and welcome to a different kind of video from your favorite space pirate, Dread Captain James. Let's take a peek at these two behemoths of spacefaring games and do a little comparison of features that they might both have side by side and see how they stack up against each other. Now, just as a disclaimer, this video is not intended to be something that points out strengths or weaknesses, nor is it a competition for best game award. It's just for comparison and will be high level, not necessarily a nitty gritty kind of thing. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, let's get going. In order to compare the two games, we will need to establish what it is we're comparing. So for each game, I'm going to separate out different categories to compare. These categories are as follows. For exploration, we're going to talk about on foot, in space, the star map, and freedom to explore. For combat, we're going to talk about on foot combat and in space combat. For customization, we'll talk about things like your ship, the player, and the weapons. For both games, we'll compare building. For both games, we'll compare aesthetics. And overall, for both games, we will compare the game style. So in this case, single versus multiplayer. With these terms established, it should be easy to see a side by side comparison of the two games and draw the lines between them showing just how different they are while still maintaining some aspects of familiarity. First and foremost, these two games are pretty radically different in terms of exploration. For all of these comparisons, we're going to start with Starfield and move our way into No Man's Sky. So, for this first one, we're going to start with Starfield. It boasts about a thousand planets to land on and walk around and explore, most of which are procedurally generated, but some have been handcrafted. You can fly your ship to a system and through the star map, select the planet or moon to travel to, then fly around that intended bit of space to see if there are ships, wrecks, or resources, and then either move on or land on that planet or moon. You cannot manually land your ship, it's all a cutscene, and there are no terrestrial vehicles to speed up your exploration, so it feels like straying too far away from the ship can take a very long time. Details on the ground are absolutely beautiful and very realistic, and the terrain and flora and fauna are equally realistic. The player has a scanner to collect data about the planet, and weapons can be used at any time. You can traverse the landscape as far as you want, and buildings or landing ships can be accessed. The star map is easy to read, and it makes sense to navigate. It's not massive, but there's plenty to explore and will take the player to over a thousand different planets if they would like to see each and every one. Now moving into No Man's Sky. The player can freely explore each solar system and fly wherever they want. They can also fly down to the surface of every planet or moon in the system and get out of their ship whenever they would like. No Man's Sky boasts 18 quintillion procedurally generated planets and every single one of them is explorable. There are also exocraft vehicles which will aid your exploration in a quicker and more efficient means of travel. Most systems have a space station where the player can buy upgrades and accept and turn in missions for rep or XP. Flora and fauna are also procedurally generated, so the breadth of variety is extreme. All buildings are explorable, and it is possible to walk completely around each and every planet if you'd like to do so. The star map is simply overwhelming and expands on for what seems like forever. And for all intents and purposes, it pretty much is. It's so large that almost every system the player enters has never been discovered before by another player, and they are the first to see it. Okay, on to combat. Starfield. Combat takes place in space and on the ground. Space is where we're going to start. 
Your starship has easy to understand controls where the player has access to standard flight mechanics, such as pitch, yaw, roll, and throttle. Power management allows the player to configure the ship on the fly to the situation at hand, sending more power to weapons, engines, shields, etc. View can be first or third person. Now let's move down to the ground. The standard shooter mechanics apply here in first or third person view according to what the player would prefer. It's smooth and fluid and some of the best combat Bethesda has come up with in my humble opinion. There are many guns and melee options and combat is very satisfying. No Man's Sky has easy to understand mechanics where the player has access to standard flight systems such as pitch, yaw, roll, and throttle. Power management also exists here, but it's more simplistic as it's all just one touch to send a majority of power to an available system such as weapons, shields, engines, or an option to balance all of them. You can fight against freighters and capital ships in space, and you have a squadron that will support you in battle. They are absolutely the worst though, and I didn't record anything with them. Now, taking us down to the ground. All ground combat is handled with a multi-tool, which is both a weapon and a utility for mining and creating. Shooter mechanics are at play and enemies are mostly robotic with some animals being hostile and needing a little bit of attention. Enemies come in predictable waves and you will fight everything from small floating sentinels to massive mechs. Okay, moving on to customization and starting with Starfield. Everything can be modified or customized in Starfield. And I mean everything. Your ship, let's start there. You can replace individual parts on your ship or you can tear it down and build it up from scratch. Everything, literally everything can be built. Every component from the landing gear to the shields can be handpicked and hand placed by you, the player. Ships can even be painted to suit your current style or your mood or whatever. Now let's move on to the player. The player has effectively two different outfits at any given time. Regular clothes where the spacesuit is not necessary and then your spacesuit. The regular clothes can be attained in stores and found throughout the game and cannot really be altered, but you can wear whatever outfit you buy or find. The spacesuit can be upgraded with many different options that will help it to become more adapted to whatever it is you need to do. The physical appearance, however, doesn't change. And when we get over to weapons, very much like the spacesuit, they can be modded to fit the user's requirements. If you need to add a scope or a longer barrel, it's an option. Adding these mods to your weapons will affect its performance and its aesthetics. And just for the record, those two mods that I listed, those are not in any way, shape, or form the only two things that you can add. There's a plethora of modifications you can apply. Now switching over to No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky also has a ton of customization, but most of it is handled behind the scenes. But we'll start with the ship. Ships all have different classes, and while you can't tell a ship's class by looking at it, I know, before you jump on me, exotics are excluded in that. The class affects the performance of the ship pretty drastically. Ships can all have components and mods added to their technology slots, giving them new abilities. For example, you can add an infra knife to your ship and take out the default cannon, and then put on several modifications that would make it much stronger. This won't affect the way the ship looks, and you can't customize the appearance at all, nor can you change the color of the ship. Finding the right ship in No Man's Sky is a big part of the game, as they are also procedurally generated, just like the rest of the game. And now on to the player. There are several options to allow the player to customize the look of their character, as well as the abilities. There are multiple places in the game where the player can change the way they look, and every change is cosmetic only. You can change race, clothing style, colors, etc., but these changes have no effect on your performance whatsoever. Now, just like the Starship, you can add components and modules to your exosuit 
which is what we call the space suit, to give it more functionality and then make that functionality strong. Again, that's not going to affect the way your suit looks, but it does give you some serious flexibility to customize your character to your play style. And lastly, we have weapons. Just like the other two categories, the exact same applies to your multi-tool. You can add components and modules to your multi-tool to change its functionality completely. Some multi-tools are set up just for mining, while others are set up completely for death dealing. Some have multiple functions and handle a little bit of everything. Okay, let's take a stab at building. Starfield. Starfield's builder seems to be very reminiscent of Fallout 4 and Fallout 76's building system. Building is straightforward. If you have the resources, you can freely place a structure. You can place things from a first person or a build camera perspective, and it's very easy to sense where things will go when placing them regardless of perspective. What I mean by this is it's not easy to phase furniture through walls. No Man's Sky, I'm looking directly at you on this one. Outposts are great for harvesting resources. The example here is a helium post I built very quickly. There are many options for building outside as well as furnishing the inside of your habs, and it doesn't take long to figure out what to do. It's a very good build system. No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky building system is a massive and clunky work of art and a curse. Pieces can be snapped together like Legos, and when the system works, it's really great. When it doesn't though, uh, not so much. Sometimes it has no idea where you wanna place a piece. That being said, the freedom it gives you is amazing, and you can build within reason almost anything you can imagine. You can choose from several different pre-built structures or build entire complexes from individual pieces. And the choice is completely up to you making the sky the limit. You may also build almost anywhere and on any planet you can find. Build near other players or maybe find a part of the galaxy where no one will ever find you. It's completely up to you. And it's a very cool aspect. Okay, so let's talk about aesthetics. Starfield. Starfield has a very realistic tone and look, and it takes itself pretty seriously. Starships look plausible, cities look real, and terrain looks like it would and could exist. The characters look and feel like they fit in the existing universe, and while the facial animations are a huge Bethesda L, as usual, they don't seem out of place for the reality that the game is going for. No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky doesn't have any humans in it. The races that you will deal with are the Gek, the Viking, and the Corvax. And after listing all three of those, you're not one of them. You are a traveler. No Man's Sky takes place in a simulation and therefore everything has a very non-realistic look and a very computer-generated theme or motif. A lot of people have compared it to being somewhat cartoonish. Ship design comes out of every genre of sci-fi from Star Wars to Battlestar Galactica, and multi-tools range from blasters to staves. Planet design sometimes takes on a very real look, but oftentimes it's very obvious that you're playing a game, however beautiful it may be. I will say that on planets where you encounter very cold or desert-like biomes, those absolutely nailed it, and they're beautiful, and they're some of my favorites. Now that brings us to game style for Starfield. This is strictly a Bethesda RPG set in space, and it's a single-player affair. Think of it as Elder Scrolls or Fallout, but in space instead of a fantasy setting or the wasteland. It's a monster-sized galaxy teeming with life and more quests than anyone knows what to do with. Even with the limitation of about a thousand planets to explore, it's a behemoth of a game. There are many different routes to go down to complete the game, and even a lot of stuff to do afterwards as well. Be a pirate, be part of the vanguard, help constellation, etc. 
The story is fantastic, and you can play a hundred hours without even touching the main story and perhaps not even realize it. No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is a sandbox survival game in space with a heavy expectation of exploration. There is a story here, and it's a very deep and intricate one, but it's presented in a completely different manner, and this is not an RPG. The story is given to you in pieces, and it expects you to be smart enough to piece it together yourself. It won't hold your hand or spoon feed you anything, and if you decide not to pursue the story and do your own thing, that's 100% fine as well. There isn't really any kind of end game at the moment, even though there is. I don't want to spoil a whole lot by explaining myself here, but suffice it to say that if you understand the 16, 16, 16, 16, then you know what I mean. The latest update added more to the picture with a ton more lore, and that can only be accessed by playing through the main story. But even as such, it isn't really quote quote end game per se. Either way, there are more things to see than are possible to experience, and it's an open universe with no real rules on how to play. It's cross-platform, so therefore, it's multiplayer. You can play alone or with up to three others, and they can be on any platform that runs No Man's Sky, except for Switch, since that is no multiplayer function currently. Okay, so that brings us to the conclusion. I know this video was a little bit longer, so thank you for hanging out for this long. Let's talk about what we've discovered. These two games are very similar in some aspects and also very different in a lot of ways. It's hard to compare them from a one-to-one -one scale as they attempt to do such different things. Starfield is an RPG and No Man's Sky is a survival sandbox. Initially, I just wanted to say that the only thing that they had really in common was space but the mechanics are surprisingly similar in a lot of areas. That being said, they each have strengths and weaknesses, but neither one is better than the other as they aren't even remotely in the same categories. I love them both, and they each do something completely different for me. I can be a totally different character in each, and they don't really translate over from one to the other. Bottom line, if you have access, play each one of them, and don't think that one replaces the other. They can easily coexist happily, and I'm glad they both do. Okay, I know this was a monster video, and thank you for watching this far. I hope you enjoyed it, and it helped you to understand just how similar and different each of these games are. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate a like on the video, and let me know in the comments what you think or what I might have missed in my comparisons. Also, drop a sub to the channel, and make sure that you see all the new content coming your way. Jump over and chat with me anytime I'm live over at twitch.tv slash redcaptainjames Monday through Friday, and let's talk about what you love or hate about these games. I'm always up for some good conversation, and hearing ideas and hopes for games I love makes my day. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next vid. Have a great rest of your day.